I'm Bruce Worson, pastor of His Place Community Church. The following message came from a Sunday morning right here at His Place. Ever feel left out of the action? Relegated to an irrelevant role or at best a bit part? You know, basically living life like a background extra? Or worse yet, like you're just watching, just watching from the back row, sitting alone in the dark, staring at the more glamorous and the more heroic, athletic, and successful award winners of this world. Well, you're not alone, okay? You're not alone. You know, actually, you are alone. You're completely alone. I don't know what I was thinking. You are absolutely, completely, and utterly alone. But we all are. And that's why you're not alone. Because we are all alone in this together. As believers, none of us lives for ourselves alone. And none of us dies for ourselves alone. If we live, we live for the Lord. If we die, we die for the Lord. But now get this. For we will all stand together before God's judgment seat. And every knee will bow. But then each of us will give an individual account of ourselves to God. Look at these two verses back to back. It's real interesting. For each one shall bear his own load. So carry each other's burdens. I just love those two verses back to back. Each one carries his own load. So carry each other's burdens. And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. He told us what his law is. New command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So carry each other's burdens because we'll all stand alone together at the judgment seat. It goes on to say, if anyone thinks he's something, you know, something more than someone else, basically, when he is nothing, nothing more, nothing less, he deceives himself, which is why each of us, each one should test his own actions according to God's directions. For it was fitting, if you were here last Sunday, you heard this, for it was fitting for him, for whom and by whom are all things and bringing many sons to glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. He can relate to us. For both he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified, here it is, are all of one, all of one together. In other words, we're all in the same boat. We're all alone together in the same boat. And I referred to that title of captain last Sunday when we pictured our planet sailing around the sun, right, in the darkness down here, like a big old cruise ship. And we considered which role we choose to take on by how we relate to those around us. And we said there's basically three, entitled passenger, right, or lowly deckhand, or courageous captain. Those are the three roles. And I bring it up again because that word that's translated captain in the New King James appears in other Bibles as author. As author. And you go, wait, author and captain? Because it holds, it's a weird word that we don't really have, but it, it holds both meanings. And so some go with captain and some go with author. But the truth is, it's in both. Our captain is the, our captain is the author. Okay, And in fact, and by author, author of our salvation, author of the whole Bible, Peter says in his letter that the Spirit of Christ wrote the Scriptures through the prophets. Christ. They were his co-writers. And you may recall me telling about sneaking onto the set of The Love Boat at 20th Century Fox back in college in the 80s and being stunned how it was so fake and gross up close. Look at that carpet. That carpet was disgusting. <laughs> oh, it was gross. And there were, you know, they, they obviously swept it for this scene, but there were just cigarette butts and stuff just everywhere on the ground. And chewed gum was stuck to everything. It was dirty and dingy and downright depressing till the lights came on. And those lenses and some movie magic made it look glamorous. And there's a name for it. It's called the Hollywood Illusion. 
And this world is like that a lot. Because without Christ, who is love, he's the definition of love. Without Christ, this world can only offer an illusion of love. It's all showmanship, right? So be the captain and take action. Chart your course, stride the deck, and encourage your passengers and crew. For we, you and I, we are God's, we're not a showmanship, we are God's workmanship, Okay? created in Christ Jesus. You were recreated when you became a believer. Created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared. It's all part of the plan beforehand that we should walk in them. You'll walk in them. Yeah, Isaiah says, so come and let us walk in the light, the true light, the true light of the Lord. It's so easy to deceive ourselves into thinking that you're just sitting alone in the crowd. When in reality, you are on deck and on stage right now as we speak. And not only are you not in the background, you're the center of attention for heaven's sake. Literally for heaven's sake. It says in Hebrews, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, it's like, don't just sit there. What are you doing? Throw off everything that hinders and, of course, the sin that so easily entangles. I love how the Bible understands sin. The sin that so easily entangles and let us fix our eyes on Captain Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. He's at work. He's at work because our creator and perfecter is not only the head writer, he's also the director, it turns out. For man's heart, it says in Proverbs, man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. Get why I wrote it with you in mind? It's all, it's all movie talk. Uh, the Lord directs his steps by way of the only script that's sure. And turns out we're all producers because we're directed to produce fruit that's worthy of repentance. Don't, uh, not piddly fruit. Fruit that's worthy of your repentance. And because every tree not producing good fruit is cut down, thrown into. So throw off because they're thrown into the fire when our creator, writer, co-producer, and director calls cut. So, <laughs> you got it. So throw off everything that hinders because taking action means taking direction so stop staring at everyone else's story and listen to the director and perfecter of yours that's all you're in charge of that's that's you that's you and him you're making something together you know why he's called the father of lights in scripture there's a reason because as his children we're called his stars So wise up and stop settling for less than what he calls the lead role. It's right here in Daniel. Those who are wise, those who lead. See, this is the role we have, leading others. So it's the lead role. Those who lead many to righteousness will shine like the what? Like the stars forever and ever. And I tell you, Jesus said, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God at your personal watch party in the clouds. Over one sinner who repents. So get busy being you. The real you. Following after your created purpose. Which requires taking direction from the guy that made you. Walk as children of light. Get off your back row. And stop staring. And start starring and shining by sharing. And when I say sharing, I don't just mean go share scriptures. I mean share love. Share truth. Just invest in people. Show this world the power of love because you have been given a leading role in the ultimate reality show. So show them. It's a role of a lifetime and beyond, turns out. So the question is right now, you're in action. You're called to be an action hero. So the question is, uh, what's your current (laughs) genre? If you had to put a genre on your life right now, what is it? Because I'll tell you this, action heroes do not settle for soap operas, slapstick, or tragedy. Might happen, but no, they need an action film. For us, that means it's all about developing a character 
that emulates Christ. Talk about the ultimate action hero, right? So be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love. Notice how they switch the words? Walk in love, because that's how we walk as children of light. Despite any setbacks or defeats that our characters face, and keeping in mind, remembering at all times, no discipline, and that's discipline is in training, not punishment. No training, no discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. That's why a lot of life seems painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of that good fruit of righteousness and peace. But now look at this. It's a warning only, but only for those who have been trained by it. Those who have allowed the Lord to direct their steps and walk them through it. Because that's the only way you get trained by it. So since we all know that, uh, why not consider it pure joy whenever you and your character face trials? Because you've seen the end. You know, how, you know what's going to happen when the credits roll. You know the plot. But I want to make this point very clear as far as the painful, the painful things in life and how differently we might see them later on. Speaking of uh, slapstick, I was a huge fan of Harold Lloyd. Anybody know, you know who Harold Lloyd is? Yeah. Okay, well, I was a real film nerd in high school. Big, uh, big fan, a lot of silent movie guys, but especially Harold Lloyd. Uh, movie star known for his wild stunts. And so when I was 18 years old, I was a senior, and uh, the old Burlington City Hall was vacated, and I got him to let, let me use it. And then I went around the antique shops, and I got them to donate enough antiques to fill it. And then, uh, you know, Ken sits back in the booth there running this thing. This is 44 years ago, by the way. Ken and I went and made a little Harold Lloyd movie. He filmed it. I starred in it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Now, here's the thing. It was a little short for school. And in one scene, my Harold is so excited to get his first job that he rushes to this gate-type swinging door, unaware that it's just been locked, and does a flip over it, okay? So we put padding down, and I practiced it in slow motion, you know, till I was confident. But when that camera went on, when we filmed it, I went for it and tore the hinges right off the wall. <laughs> you talk about painful... Want to see the scene? Yeah. Okay, okay, take a look. Me at 18. Yeah, it just goes on like that. Oh, thank you. We'll do a license deal. <laughs> so, should we watch the fall in slow motion? <laughs> I just love looking at this thing. There I go. Right about there I'm going, what, what, what's happening? Oh, man. Oh, man. What a surprise. I, wasn't, I couldn't realize really what was happening until it was over. And it was very painful. But the... But the very first thing I said when I realized what had just happened was, do we get it on camera? <laughs> it wasn't recorded. See, and so understand, there's a big point here. I would not have chosen it to happen, but I was thrilled that it had. If you ask me right now, if I had a magic wand, I could make that painful ordeal just not have existed. I'd say, no, no, I love that moment looking back. I sure didn't like it during the flip. You know, just tell me it was recorded. Life's going to be like that. Not every situation, but a lot. A lot. In hindsight, you know. We, we just can't appreciate it during the flip. 
This is the flip. We're in the flip. But afterwards, we sure will. Would it all make sense? So until we're given either sometimes the foresight down here, but more likely the hindsight up there, we must trust our director to develop our character because you alone choose how you'll act in the moment. And whether we admit it to ourselves or not, we more often than not absolutely know his direction. We do. We mostly always know his direction. We just don't want to follow it. Like Jonah, we often cut and run when we hear him call action because it mostly has to do with interactions with people. And as we saw last Sunday, if it was pets, we'd be fine. (laughs) But it's people. It's those hard to lovables. But I want to try and change your mind on that a little bit because believe it or not even the most off-putting are appealing when we remove the distractions of this world I learned this lesson one of the weirdest things I've ever experienced I learned this lesson in a powerful emotional way years ago in the lobby of the old Roosevelt Hotel downtown Seattle I was working on a script all by myself on a stormy day, and I was facing these huge windows right here, looking out. And at any given point, you can see about 40 people outside, right? It's blowing. And I had on headphones with music to drown out distractions. And I just happened, I'm writing, and I just happened to look up as this song came on. It's called Forgotten Dreams. And I'm just looking out the window. And then I realize it is synchronizing with what I'm seeing. Shockingly so. So much so that my throat just, I can feel my throat cinch up and tears just start running down my cheeks. I get emotional remembering it. And I'm not a crier, so this is weirdly cool. It's like, oh, I do have feelings. So... So I tried it again. I let the song play out. And I played it again. And then I played it again. And it did it every time. And I cried like a baby every time. And I I could figure out how it was lining up. And I remember, here's four real things that I saw. Just ordinary things. A man running to board a bus. Like, (laughs) a girl opening an umbrella in the wind. But it was so deep. An older couple walking by holding hands. I thought I'd lose it. And a mumbling beg lady with her life in her cart, and I did lose it. There was no other sound besides this song scoring their actions. Now, I'm guessing, in hindsight, I'm guessing that my subconscious, since there's like 40 different things going on at any given time, my subconscious was selecting who to focus on based on what the song was evoking. Had to be. But that only explains how it synced up. Why was I bawling at these instantly, deeply moving, mesmerizing moments? And this is weird. When I took the headphones off, I couldn't force myself to feel it. And then I'd put them back on and start choking up again. And I think what I stumbled onto was very simply sitting still and seeing humanity without any distractions and with that music intensifying my feelings you should try it you ever watch lost i watched the making of and the award-winning composer who scored lost said music can't make anyone feel anything it can only amplify what we already feel Well, if that's true, then that is likely why I realized that very weird day that I love the lost far more than I thought. And that bag lady, oh, scars me to this day. That bag lady was the most poignant and moving and heartbreaking of all because I could suddenly see this deep beauty to which I'd been blind. And it made me blubber. But sadly, whenever our writer, director, perfecter calls action, the world immediately calls distraction. (coughs) 
So you got to choose, what will it be, action or distraction? Because as Jesus said, only those who remain in me will produce much of that good fruit. Because whoever remains in love, see, it's all the same. Whoever remains in love remains in God and God in him or her. So how do we remain in love and in God and in Christ? Well, according to Jesus, by remaining in his word. Because it's truth and it's life. Jesus said, if you remain in my word, well, you'll truly be my disciples. And you, my friend, will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. What is truth, Pilate asked just before the cross? And Jesus answered just after the resurrection, I am the truth and the life. And then he said, you can't handle the truth. No, no, you didn't say that at all. No, not at all. In fact, I bring that up because he said exactly the opposite. He didn't say you can't handle the truth. What did he say? He said, behold my hands and my feet that it is I myself. Handle me. Isn't that funny? The truth said, handle me. Handle me and see. So the question isn't, can you handle the truth? It's, will you? Will you? The apostle John writes, we did. We will. We did. We have seen and our hands have handled. And then look what he calls it. The word of life. The word of life. Have you? Do you? How often? Because the more you remain in it, the more it remains in you. It's our number one action for remaining true. Because if we remain in it, we'll believe in it. And if we believe in it, we'll act on it. And you say, well, I'm so far, I'm so far from acting like Christ and I fail so often. Oh, you're not alone. You are not alone in that. It, just, it takes a lot of takes before it takes. <laughs> so for heaven's sakes... Stick to the only script that's sure. Because believe it or not, I want you to take this next line home. This is it right here. Believe it or not, you are the story that God is telling. That's true. You're the story God is telling. And without setbacks and sorrows to overcome, there'd be no story. Certainly no inspiration. But take heart, it's all recorded. It is all recorded, and your replays will be in syndication forever. So please choose to be the action star that deep in your heart you know that you are. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather the spirit of power and love. And self-control, we need the self-control to direct that power of love. That's how we focus it. Because he has delivered us from the power of darkness into the kingdom of the son of his love. Which means, I'm going to correct what I said at the beginning. It means as a believer, you'll actually never ever be completely and utterly alone. Because he will be with you. And he will not leave you. So just, you need your costume. Clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ. You say, well, how? How we do that? Walk in the light as he is in the light. You say, but, but how's that? We're, we're told he wraps himself in the light of love and truth. So shut out the distractions and wrap your mind around his word and wrap his love around your heart. And spring into action at his direction and shine the light of life that lets this old world know just what true star power looks like. And you might just hear him say, now that's a wrap. Let's pray. <laughs> Father God, Father of lights, we love you and worship you as your dearly loved shining stars. Holy Spirit, direct our steps and rid us of the distractions that hold us back from taking action. Lord Jesus, we thank you.
thank you and praise you for never forsaking us, never leaving us. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Well, thanks for listening in. Why don't you join us on a Sunday morning? If you'd like more information about the church, just point your browser to hisplacechurch.com. Until next time, may the Lord bless you, keep you, and make his face shine upon you.